Are you maybe a highly sensitive person on the spiritual path? Are you struggling on the one hand with a very deep and sincere wish to deepen your spiritual practice, go deeper into meditation, go deeper into energetic practices, sometimes even take some time off. However, as you do those practices, as you deepen, the effects are often overwhelming, so strong that you then need grounding. But then when you try to ground yourself, even that can cause some levels of um, misalignment or feelings of imbalance, disharmony, and even stronger longing to the spiritual practice, finding yourself always kind of in an in-between state. If this sounds familiar, then you're probably on this range of highly sensitive people on the spiritual path. So I have here a few summaries because I'm not the best with memorizing things I want to say in videos, but it's important for me in this video to focus with you and put the spotlight on a few important points to make the path much easier for you. So you see, I myself have always been a very, very sensitive person, a very, very highly sensitive being, very dedicated to the spiritual path, and I always had to, and still have, to some degree, to tread on very fine lines. So highly sensitive people very often have a depth, a longing to spirituality. There's a longing to, uh, there's a very sensitive, um, um, there's an openness to life very often and that openness causes them to experience suffering very often, psychological very often. And there's a strong yearning to move into the spiritual path as a natural response to find inner peace, wholeness, completeness, a certain answer or response to that very, very sensitive state. But interestingly, um, even when positive states appear through spiritual practice, these can destabilize their nervous system, their body, their psyche, their emotional state. And so, no matter what they do, highly sensitive people can very often feel stuck in between. I think that maybe the first thing I want to tell you in this video is, first of all, you're not alone. You're not alone, and not only that, you're also not wrong, and there's nothing blocked about you. You see, you're just a very, very subtle kind of being with a subtle energetic system and a subtle nervous system. You are a being that walks on very fine lines. This has nothing to do with being blocked. Because we're living in a kind of a cultural, social context where big, epic, powerful stories usually are considered more, considered better, then it is very probable that you judge yourself for being not enough, for being wrong, or for being wrong or for being blocked, as if there's a blockage you need to overcome. Probably also feeling that you're not really wanting the truth, you're not really ready for spiritual awakening, you're not really ready for enlightenment and to go into the beyond, as if you're, you're concluding negative conclusions about yourself. But I want you to know there's nothing wrong about you and there's definitely a way to progress without very... Um, uh, without two extreme measures that will destabilize you. And that's really positive news. So let's get deeper into this and talk about the different uh, advice, advice that I have to give that will help you balance your own practice and find your own kind of sweet little um, sweet, sweet path that you can really walk on and, and, and experience positive results, deepening spiritual states, a deepening rootedness and spiritual knowingness and um, revelation, while also maintaining psychological, emotional, nervous system balance. So as I already said in the beginning of the video, I've prepared a few uh, papers here because it's easier for me to remember exactly the points I want to tell you. I think it's really worth it. So forgive me if I'm just looking from time to time on the papers. 
As I kind of said just a moment ago, I think it's important to understand that the first thing is don't tense up around the fact that you cannot um, whenever you want. You cannot just take like prolonged times of intense spiritual practice. So there's this image given to us through books or through certain teachers that have a different constitution, a different energetic constitution, for example, and, and a different need therefore. For example, there are many spiritual practitioners or yogis or monks that take prolonged periods of time of meditation in a cave, in a monastery, in a retreat. They go to 40 days, three months, and sometimes a few years of retreat and meditation practice. And it sounds, wow, if I'm not able to do this, what does it mean about my spiritual longing? Maybe it means I'm not really ready, I don't really want. And you really have to let that go. It's not true that you're not ready. It's not true that you don't want. So what you have to remember is that, as I said before, you're not wrong, you're not blocked. Your system simply works differently. More, sorry, less is more for you. Remember this, it's like, a, it's like a slogan for you. Less is more. You don't need to go into a three months retreat, a silent meditation retreat in order to achieve the results that another person with a different constitution would achieve. You might need just a few days or you might need a whole different kind of arrangement around it. Maybe you just need to think about your journey more in terms of like, a life journey instead of like some kind of focused um, period of time where you put a lot of fire and intensity. So for you highly sensitive people, another thing I want to say, do not compare yourself. Relieve yourself from this burden of comparing yourself with other people. Don't compare yourself to what you read in books. Books are very often very colorful and attractive stories and that's why they sell um, very often if you really go into these people's lives you would understand that it's a little bit different there's more subtlety there's more intricacies there are more stages uh, you know you hear very bombastic awakening stories but you don't know all the subtleties the before the in the between and the after so i think it's important not to compare yourself secondly imagine how many awakening stories spiritual expansion stories you haven't heard people that are similar to you you see but because these are so subtle right and, and 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 include many stages often they don't get into the books but I'm telling you that's true I know it about myself I've seen it about people around me so don't compare yourself free yourself from that let yourself just have your own journey release yourself from that from that burden enjoy your journey as it is and admit that it also has many, many beautiful moments. If you don't push yourself, believing that you have to be already in a certain point, you will realize amazing, like, wow, I'm already experiencing amazing things right now. So be more gentle. Recognize that in your high, highly sensitive nature, there can also be a pushiness, a kind of an, 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 an irritability that causes you to really push and already want to be somewhere you're not. So we've already talked about the fact that you, you need to respect your structures. I'm, in, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of going through what I've written here, right? That you, it's not, it's not, you're inherently sensitive. You see, you're inherently sensitive. It's not because you don't care it's not because you uh, can't advance, it's not because you're not ready, it's not because you don't mean it, and so on and so forth. Release yourself from the guilt. That's your structure, that's your structure. Just a little teeny tiny touch for you is like a very profound dip into the water. Respect and appreciate that. You need subtle adjustments, you don't need intense practices you don't need more if you understand and by the way this goes both for spiritual practice but also the grounding side as highly sensitive people i'm 100 sure you've dealt with the subject of grounding i literally don't know any highly sensitive person walking on the spiritual path who isn't feeling oh i'm getting a little bit airy and i need some grounding i need to feel kind of like the earth under my feet to feel safe and secure 
but also grounding. Don't overdo it because overdoing grounding will also cause a kind of like overly, uh, oh, an overwhelming experience in your body and nervous system. That's the amazing thing about you guys, about us highly sensitive people. We just need really subtle fine tunings and that's enough, subtle adjustments. So the most important thing is really to live a kind of balanced, harmonious, not too aggravating, not overly stimulating life. That's, the, that's really the key that you should remember, to live a not overly stimulating life. If you look at the teachings of Gautama the Buddha, he always emphasized mildness, right? Kind of the middle path. Think about it like that. Not too much. Not too much. Mm. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Mm. So, right, so it's good to do small but honest adjustments. And this emphasis on honest, small but honest, you see, that's the key. It's not about doing something that is like very big and powerful, but rather small, attentive to your nature, attentive to your structure, but honest. So make sure that these small steps really mean something and are really relevant to where you are in the journey. So it's not about, in the spiritual path, it's not so much about quantity, it's about the level of honesty. One little move that stems out of honesty can yield an amazing result much more meaningful and impactful than a three-month intense retreat that can also, you know, provide a very powerful state, but that state is not going to really last if you're not moving from honesty. So remember honesty. Make sure to be clear. Make sure to be kind of really honest with yourself. Be attentive always. What's my next step? What's relevant right now? And again, see how I'm talking. Just maintain that kind of patience that relaxedness around it. There's no hurry anywhere. You're not missing on something. So just take a small, honest step that's relevant right now, and you're gonna see how wonderfully effective it turns out to be. Less is more, remember, that's your slogan. So what's next? Let's see. Mm. Yes. Next thing I want to say is that while you have a spiritual practice, especially for highly sensitive people, it's important to maintain an ongoing interaction and engagement with normal life. Don't cut yourself too much. Be in touch with your friends. Be in touch with your job. Maintain a creative um, kind of uh, a creative life. Make sure that you do things that you love during the day some physical activity, enjoy cooking, just live really a normal life. Don't try to make your spiritual practice into something too special that kind of, um, that splits your life into your life and then that kind of spiritual zone. Because for you, it needs to just be one and the same. One flow, one flow. Don't. The moment you make it into something too special, immediately you prepare the ground for the imbalance. You get overly excited about it. And then the other side of overexcitement is anxiety, imbalance, dissociation, what have you, right? So for you, it works much better if it's simply part of the natural flow of your life. You don't need to, when you cook, you don't need to constantly be like in a mindfulness state, for example. That's going to be a bit too much for you. I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about. It's, it's more just enjoy cooking when you're cooking and take some time for reflection and meditation. You finished with that, go on to the next thing, meet your friend, maintain some inquisitive, conscious context in general in your life because eventually spirituality is not only on the meditation cushion anyhow. But this kind of overall balance, continuing your life normally, is going to give you that sense of groundedness and security. Not groundedness is some kind of form of another intense practice, which very often we all tend to do, right? Okay, now I need to ground myself. I need to just uh, stay barefoot, 
on a piece of grass or just go into wild nature and but that also becomes some kind of like very bombastic experience which also then um, pushes you out of balance so don't do that be normal normality is an amazing remedy for us highly sensitive people and where do you find God if not in the well normal in this right So the key here is gentle openings, gentle grounding. Remember this, gentle openings, gentle grounding. That's your path. It's a path of gentleness. Gentle activation, gentle openings, gentle grounding. And you will see that you don't need bombastic openings. You don't need bombastic grounding. Enough going gentle. And you're going to see, wow, divine silence love is hidden here right here i don't need to do something aggressive in subtlety i can also sense it i can feel it too much opening is counterproductive too much grounding also counterproductive find the balance so just remember, okay? Patience, honesty, consistency. Remember these three words. They're gonna take you a long way. This is really, uh, the spiritual path is a life cultivation. It's not something that, you know, that, that, that you do in a, it, it, it's not something you forcefully push yourself into. Let time cook you well. Allow for the time factor. Allow you to cook with spiritual practice. Don't force yourself. So if you find yourself dealing with this kind of in-between zone, not really finding your access to um, spiritual practice, when you're trying to spiritually to practice spiritually, when you're trying to meditate and doing energetic and do energetic practices and you it can it, it irritates your entire nervous system and, and it makes you fall into anxiety or imbalances. And then you try to ground yourself, but the grounding also becomes irritating and then you feel like a deep longing and it becomes even more depressing. Feel free to contact me. That's my um, area of expertise. You can contact me in the link below in the description. That's what I help people do. I help them find those fine tunings and balance those irregularities. So just feel free to, to, to call me as a highly sensitive person and I'll simply be happy to assist you on your path. Um, after all, as I said, I myself am a highly sensitive person, so I know exactly all the subtleties and intricacies on that path. So I'm looking forward to hear from you. I hope this video is helpful for you. You can find, again, if you want to contact me, if you need some guidance on that level, uh, you can schedule a session with me in the link below in the description. And just remember, uh, less is more. That's the key for you.